All right, thank you, everybody. It's great to be here at our press conference. We are announcing we have been picked up for season two of Callaway Live. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. It's right, thank you. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. It's awesome, it's almost as if we never rehearsed that before I did it, but thank you for being here, press of the world, but for season two, as anything with Callaway, products, branding, marketing, we're not gonna do it the same way we did last year. We are going to take it to a new level, and for the season premiere of season two of Callaway Live, we thought we're not gonna just have any guests. We need to have a World Golf Hall of Famer. We need to have a major championship winner. We need to have someone with more than 40 wins on tour. And so we looked, we scoured the countryside, and we tried to find somebody that had those credentials. And we couldn't find anyone that had those credentials. <laughs> Except we dug hey. deep and we found one person. <laughs> This is our season two premiere. Yeah. And I know what you're all thinking. We're doing this again? Yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> a very strict approval process went down to get us our second season, and it went sort of like this. We walked into a room, we said, should we do that again? We said, yeah, why not? <laughs> so here we are. What a great year we had with season one of Callaway Live, representing the very, very best of content, we believe, anywhere on the planet of Earth, we can't comment on what's going on around the galaxy because we don't have a lot of knowledge of, to that effect. And any Star Wars fans here? Oh, uh, I saw, uh, yeah. But, but here we are, and we really are setting the tone for content in the space. A great year, obviously, with our equipment, industry-leading performance, industry-leading innovation. More commercials coming. You guys okay with that? Best products on the planet. A lot of people now comparing themselves to us, so we need to keep pushing it forward, and Callaway Live is no different as we set up for season two. So to get it kicked off, we have, we're gonna start off with, I think, the very, very best guest we've ever had. With no disrespect to anyone, we're gonna start off 42 wins, five majors, World Golf Hall of Famer, Phil Mickelson will be here tonight. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, we will be right back with Phil Mickelson. He's like, you will never beat me at golf. <laughs> and let's, the, the dude sucked at golf. Like, he was awful. Were you like, you suck, I can totally beat you. No, I, I wasn't even, it wasn't even that, it was more like, yeah. I was like, no matter what happens, I will be able to beat you at golf. And so I said, he's like, all right. He's like, you have five years to be able to beat me at golf. He had to beat me one time, $500. I was like, sure, game on. And I'm very competitive, so of course, that's kind of what spawned in the initial, like, I'm gonna go out there and see what I can do. And I was terrible, like most people when they start to try to golf. And then I met Hank through a friend and he was doing the show, he was doing the Haney Project. And I was like, this is perfect, this is amazing. And then that's where I basically started. You know, my first golf lesson I was with Hank Haney, which is pretty ridiculous. All right. Welcome back to Callaway Live, our guest tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Phil Mickelson. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, man. What a nice set you have Isn't there. What nice? a great crowd, nice people. We've been trying Love to get it. you for a long time, mainly because I feel like we have a lot in common, you and me. Um, we have two daughters. Actually, that's all we have in common. But thanks for being here. We're around the same age. It's not funny. 25 years have been on tour. Does that blow your mind still to think about it? It blows. It, it, uh, it's amazing how fast it went. It's amazing to see my kids as a timeline. And I look back at some of the wins when they were little and running around the greens like at Baltusrol. And now we're going back to Baltusrol this coming year. And, and they're grown up like they're real people. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's inter interesting to use golf as kind of a timeline, but it's gone so fast. Uh, but I've just cherished every moment. Well, you know, you're, you know that it's been a great career when your daughter probably can drop you off at the golf course now. And it, and it seemed, I, we remember Payne Stewart holding your face and before she was even born. It's, it's, we feel like as fans, and we can be fans, that's what this show's all about, we feel like we've grown up with your career and it's, it's just awesome to see you still out there trying to beat the kids. It's hard to believe 16 and a half years ago that took place, that uh, pain you know, grabbed my face. I still remember him uh, like it was yesterday and, and I can't believe that that much time has gone by. And you know, his, uh, his kids now have uh, turned into some pretty interesting and, and very good adults and I give uh, Tracy a lot of credit. She's done a, she's done a great job. All right, so let's, let's pretend that our great R&D group here created a cloning dis uh, machine. And then they also, they've already have a time machine, we know that. And they cloned you and then sent you back in time. How would a 45-year-old Phil Mickelson compete against the 25-year-old Phil Mickelson? Please say 45-year-old Phil Mickelson. Please say that. Please. please. I, I think that I've actually, uh, I, I, I don't know if the, I could use the word mature because I think <laughs> yeah. something happened. Like, like when I hit about 21, my body kept aging, but my <laughs> maturity level stopped. And so it's not, it's not that different from when I, was, uh, when I was that age. However, the equipment from when I came out on tour has changed significantly. In, in 1993 or 4, when I was, uh, my first couple of years, I was 25th in driving distance at... 269 <laughs> and in 2003 uh, just 10 years later I was 25th in driving distance at 299 and now uh, I'm right around 20 25th still 20th 22nd or so at right around 300 so it really hasn't uh, like the the ball and the clubs and the technology and the equipment has evolved to where I'm you know 30 yards longer as is everybody else off the tee than I was when I was a, a lot younger so a lot of things have happened equipment wise as well as with my game the game has changed the players that have not evolved have not been able to take advantage of the uh, the, the improved equipment they've kind of uh, fallen behind but your game still as you said is pretty similar if we had watched you back then you know walked 18 holes with you you're still you know pretty freewheeling going forward in places where we have a lot of the shots I'm just going to be honest with you I watch through my fingers when, sure. I, when I watch you play but you know still I, I do the same stupid stuff that I've always done you know <laughs> like I say I haven't evolved in that regard but I enjoy that like I enjoy the challenge of creative shots. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm trying to put myself in those spots intentionally, but it just happens. I just do. And I end up really enjoying the challenge of trying to get out. Do you practice that stuff? I mean, do you... In tournaments all the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Do you practice when you're just messing around, like trying to hit a big hook around the house or, you know, a big, a big cut, you know, over the kids as they're playing around in the, in the driveway? Do you ever... I, I do. I, I, I not around the kids, you know. But when I'm on the range, I enjoy, you know, trying to hit different shots. I've always enjoyed that challenge. I think that um, the ability to uh, change trajectories, change movement of the golf ball, change distance control, and really understand uh, understand where the ball is going to end up when you do that stuff. I think that's kind of a, an art that hasn't been perfected by the younger generation yet, uh, just because probably they haven't had enough uh, enough time. They're so into. Uh, beautiful golf swing yeah, and ball striking, right. and they do a great job of that. I mean, there's a lot of perfection. There's a lot of great golf swings, a lot of great ball striking. But when they do find themselves in a precarious situation, uh, sometimes it, uh, they haven't quite had the experience yet to get out of it. Does that take discipline as you've gotten to be more of a veteran player of really understanding your own game and not having like, oh, I want to swing like that guy or play like that guy? 
I think that's part of it. I also think the biggest part of the discipline is understanding your own game and allowing yourself to play your best for Thursday. So most of the young guys come out and they make the mistake of over practicing, of overdoing it, of burning that, wearing themselves out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They see guys practicing and they say, oh my goodness, I'm getting behind if I don't go out and hit balls. And they see guys practicing on the putting green. If I'm getting behind if I don't go putt. So what happens is they spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday grinding on the golf course or on the range, practice facility for hours and Thursday comes around and they're not ready to play and compete. And so what's really uh, been the maturity level or the element that I've learned the most is how to get myself to be ready to play on Thursday. Excuse me. And that's why I've been able to play some of my best golf in some of the bigger events. Well, we've seen a lot of that. And a lot of you remember last year when Dick Enberg was on the show and we walked him through sort of a greatest hits of Phil Mickelson at Augusta um, with the small problem that we didn't have any rights to any of that stuff. So we had our own Ethan Gannot, uh, who's actually the only, you know, left-hander in our group um, that, that can, you know, em emulate a lot of your shots, kind of duplicate that. And I wanted to just kind of walk you through it. I yeah, wanted a little see. bit to know what was going through your mind as you got into some trouble spots and, and played some of the most iconic shots in golf. So here, Let's here's the shot we all remember. This is 2010 at 13 at Augusta National. Oh yeah, I remember that. It was a, remember that? It was a tough lie. Really tough lie. And, and so you, as you came up, you had to, I mean, how far was that gap between the trees there? It was uh, about that far right there. It was a couple of feet. And I remember Bones was giving me all those, those hand gestures as you saw. And I walked into the Did you the have shot. to worry about the power lines like Ethan did there or no? No, Oh. I don't remember. I blocked those out. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> See the fist pump? Yeah. That was, that. that was the key right there. There you go. Yeah. So when you, when you hit a shot like that, are you as amazed as we are watching that you pull it off, or is it sort of like, hey, I, I got this? Um, <laughs> on that particular shot, on that particular shot, as you can see, Ethan demonstrate yes. the lie wasn't that great. It was right. sitting in the pine needles. And really, it was, I was, didn't have a choice. to. I had to go between those trees even if I laid up. And when you have a higher lofted club, like a pitching wedge to, that I would use to lay up, there's more of a chance to get pine needles and stuff in between the ball and the face and a greater chance that it were to kick offline. So the straighter the face uh, golf club, the more coverage I get on the ball and the better chance I have of hitting it through that gap, which is why it was a mathematical uh, <laughs> odds of, getting it, of hitting enough club to get on the green, a six iron, as opposed to trying to lay up to get it just through that gap, which I is the goal. I love the fact that in Phil's mind, he makes that the percentage shot yes. to hit the six iron <laughs> yeah. over the creek yeah, to a it was tight a tough, end. It was a tough sell on Bones. Yeah, I had a hard <laughs> time selling him on that. All right, so this one actually happened last year. You're That's making good. a charge on Sunday. And you're, you know, just a few shots off the lead. This is 15. You, you knocked it in a, into the green side bunker in two. Yes. And so tight pin again. Well, I walked in, as you can see, with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> What's the key here? Just be aggressive? Uh -oh. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the, the key here is that the first couple didn't count. And then yeah. right there. <laughs> And then I, you again, I mean, the I had double to... fist pump. I really like the way he, the double fist pump comes. Up. Did you see that yet again? Yeah. Here we go. That's uh. That's... There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Crowd's going crazy. He didn't do it. I, I need a little more thumbs up. A little more thumbs up. I'll work on that next. There, there we there go. Is. Yeah. There. That's what I like. Here we go. All right. All right. I remember our last one. I remember there are very few shots in golf where I remember exactly where I was when I watched this. I was in my living room. My brother was at, at my house, we were watching it, and we were, this could be it. This is 2004, 18th green. What'd you have, about 12, 12, 13 feet? It was, it was eight, about eight, I would guess 18, 18 feet. 18 feet. But, uh, you can see again, I walked Tricky in there. Tricky putt. Yeah, with confidence. <laughs> and it's kind of do or die, I don't remember taking right? that long, yeah, but, uh, but you know, time stands still when you're in the thick of it. And then we remember that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, you may not have been thinking this way, but since you knew that that was going into the archives of golf history, that you did the pro move of spreading the legs a little bit to make it look like you were, you know, yeah. three feet off the ground. Yeah, I think what, the, you know, there though, the photographers never really caught me at the apex, so it all, it never looks like, it doesn't look like I got that high, but I, I was really high. Really high. You <laughs> dug it. All right, we're going to be right back with Phil Mickelson. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
My fellow Americans, forget about your political party affiliation for one second. This election season, I want you to focus on what's really important, and that is Callaway Golf. I'm Chad Coleman, and I approve of this Chad's Tiny Studio. If you haven't noticed, our stock is rising faster than a Steph Curry jump shot. Take into consideration the following areas. How's our guest Phil Mickelson's 2016 campaign going so far? If you include his three top fives and only six starts, and the fact that he's number one on tour in scoring average, I'd say that's a strong to very strong start to the year. And it'd be aloof of me if I failed to mention we have seven, yes, seven staffers inside the top 25 world golf rankings. We have the number one irons, fairway woods, and hybrids in golf right now. We also just released the MD3 Lucky Clover Wedges, which has taken over social media, and they're also available on St. Patrick's Day. We partnered with Vice Sports to bring the people amazing behind the scenes video of some of our star athletes. The series is called Off Day, and it's been a real hit with the silent majority. So remember, this election season is all about eliminating the big numbers. So vote Callaway and make golfers great again. See you next time. One of those years that you looked at the calendar years ago to think about, obviously, the majors in Augusta, Oakmont, Baltazar at the end of the year, uh, Ryder Cup year, Olympic year. This is, this is one of the best years we've ever had, isn't it? I, I totally agree, and it's really condensed all at uh, uh, the same time over the summer months. Having the Olympics be part of the, the golf schedule now is an exciting thing. It's a goal of mine to try to be on that team and be a fairly uh, elder statesman in the Olympics <laughs> or one of the older Olympic athletes. I think that would be a, something that would be special. I never dreamt in my lifetime that I would have the potential to be an Olympic athlete. And so I, I've been putting forward a lot of work going into this year to, to make this one of the best of my career. And the addition also of trying to win a U.S. Open at, at Oakmont or anywhere, but at Oakmont this year, uh, that's a great challenge for me to try to complete the career Grand Slam. And then we get to go back to Baltusrol, where uh, I have some very fond memories uh, last time we were there of winning my only PGA Championship. So uh, a lot of exciting things. I love Troon. Uh, Troon was the my best finish in the, the Open Championship until I ended up winning at Muirfield. But it was my best chance where I missed by a shot to the playoff with uh, Todd Hamilton and Ernie Els. Uh, I, I missed by one, one stroke there, and it was... Uh, Really, a golf course I, I loved and enjoyed, and I can't I can't wait to get back. And then we got the inclusion of the Olympics, and we have the Ryder Cup at the end of the year, which I'm very excited about the direction that we're we're headed as a unit, really coming together to help each other get our best golf out. And I'm hopeful that uh, this is a start of a a, a 10-year Ryder Cup success story. Well, it seems like there's a lot of good energy now too with the team around the Ryder Cup. And when I think of you and your spot in that group. You're a guy that could play with anybody that you would look as a potential player on that list, which is pretty cool. I, I love playing with a bunch of different guys uh, on the team. There's so many great individuals that we have, so many great guys that I, I enjoy playing and competing with. And it's a very emotional experience, a very emotional partnership where you have to build each other up to, to, to play at a high, the highest level ever. And also, uh, when somebody's slipping or things are down, you've got to be there to, to pick them up, and they have to be there to pick you up. I think that's why we see some of the European players uh, throughout history play some of their best golf in the team event more so than they even do individually and I go back to to guys like uh, Philip Price, Philip Walton, Nacho Garrido and even players like today Ian, Ian Poulter and Justin Rose as great a players as they are I see them play some of their best golf in the Ryder Cup and it's because they're able to to build and lift each other up and play as a unit play as a team and for us to win against such a strong team built of so many great players playing some of their best golf we're gonna have to do the same but I, I, I believe if we play our best golf I think we can win what do you like in the locker room? Are you a, are you a cheerleader type? Are you a go around and talk to all the all the players and caddies type, or do you do you kind of stick to yourself? I don't stick to myself. Uh, I, I get along with uh, all the guys on the team, and I enjoy and cherish the moments of the week, and I. I uh, I just enjoy hanging with everybody. That's why those weeks, for, uh, friendships that get formed last a, a career. They last a lifetime. And those, those weeks are, are special bonding weeks. Are you a guy that likes to go around and talk to players? How'd you do today? What, or, what's it like in there? 
Well, it's uh, you know it's a lot of strategizing. It's a, it's uh, it's building each other up. It's talking about uh, how we're going to play certain holes, what we're going to do golf ball wise. You know when we're when we're alternating uh, shots and so forth. Now the Ryder Cup, there's no one ball rule, so you can play whatever ball you want. But, uh, <laughs> but there are some team events that have a one ball rule that you sometimes you know, that yeah, gets yeah. people in trouble. It's crazy yeah. how that stuff works. <laughs> uh, you, you'd have to be a complete idiot though not to know the rules, but. <laughs> Uh, but then here I am. So it's <laughs> those those type of little conversations uh, about getting each other ready and making sure we're focused and 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 so forth. How we play in practicing, but that stuff goes on for a year or two before. I mean, it's been going on now for months, and here we are, eight eight nine months away. So it's uh, it's that's all part of the unification and bringing bringing each other up and building each other up. Are you a guy that likes to look at how you're going to attack a golf course? You know, like you mentioned all the majors and Olympics. I assume you don't know much about that golf course, but you've played at Hazeltine quite a few times, I would imagine. Do you think about how your game shapes up and making adjustments, or do you just like to attack it the, the way you normally do? I think that it's uh, a lot of it's circumstance pending. You have to have alternate uh, ways to play it. Sometimes uh, when you're behind, you have to have a more of an attacking strategy. When you're ahead, you want to play maybe a more conservative strategy. Not that I do, but uh, <laughs> the, the other thing, too, is you, you also uh, – uh, you want to be wary of when you're playing well, when you're not playing well. Is this the time to take on this shot right now? Am I, am I swinging well enough to try to pull this off, or should I not risk the stroke or two penalty strokes and, and just play safe right now? So a lot of that is an in-the-moment decision as well uh, that you have to be aware of uh, well in advance. Well, I always, you're a guy that's won major championships with one driver. You're a guy that's won major championships with two drivers. You're a guy that's won a major championship with no drivers. That's and right. You're, you're constantly, That's right. you're constantly, twi that's why we love you so much because you speak to us. A lot of people don't know this, but we do, obviously, we're your partners on your equipment and working through that, but Phil also comes to us for advice about tinkering with all kinds of things to improve his performance. Let's take a look. Okay, G, so what I'm looking for is a little sharper edge to slide under the burger a little bit easier. And gotcha. I know a driver has an 830 max COR coefficient restitution, but I'm hoping if we thin the face, I'll be able to get a little bit better flip for higher altitude on the burger. Randy, so, I, my toaster, it's a, it's a little off. Like when they pop up, you see how they're going oh, to the side? Yeah, yeah, that's not right. And what I want is, I see how that one went straight, but it's like inconsistent, you know? Yeah, it's gotta be frustrating. Do you mind grinding a little bit of an arc in this? Or let me hold the cheese and I'll just test it. All right. Put a little bend in it, yeah. Yeah, bend that bad boy, that's it. Let's see, it looks like, well, it's tilted inside. It looks like the MOI might be a little low on that left side. Okay. Let's put some tape in there and see if we can't bring the MOI up a little bit. We just won't tell the USGA, but they don't care about a spatula, do they? Oh, did you see how nicely it slides now through? Now we're talking. Yeah, that's it, that's it. That should bring it out, because nothing's okay, worse than that toes one. coming out let's crooked. Try let's try this one. Oh, oh, boom. Money. You yeah, nailed it. Yeah, first try. Really competitive yeah. guy, Phil. They're, they're uh, smart technicians, those two. Yeah, they know, they know what they're talking about. Are you super competitive around the house? Are you, like, chasing you and Evan, like, running out to the mailbox? Do you get to the mail first or any of that kind of stuff? We play airsoft. Do you know what airsoft is? Like, uh -huh. you're shooting uh, BBs, but they're plastic. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. They still hurt. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll run around our yard and, and uh, play airsoft, and we're both really competitive. But that's... Uh, that's fun. Yeah, we got to get all geared up, though. <laughs> yeah. Any of any of the kids taken up the game yet, or they've taken it up? They've tried it. They've been introduced to it. But I think that it's been a little bit of a deterrent for them. Where yeah. uh, when they go to the golf course, they have people watching. They get people asking for them to get me to sign stuff, and so it's it's kind of uh, deterred them. But every now and then, we'll go out. We'll hit a few balls. We'll do some stuff in our yard. Have a little putting contest and stuff. And I, I cherish it because my most special time in the game was playing golf with my dad. He would pick me up from school. We'd go down to the local municipal course, Balboa, play the twilight hours. We'd get stuck out there on that par 5, 13th hole, have to walk down the canyon and then back up. Those were the moments that I cherished, though, that time with my father. And so uh, I, wish I, I wish I had that, but it's been so fun for me to, to be a part of their other athletics. You know, they play a lot of different sports. And they're on, uh, my oldest is a, a three varsity sport, uh, three sport varsity athlete at, at Pacific Ridge. And I love going to all her games. And Sophie's, you know, into her dance and, and her sports. And uh, Evan's playing lacrosse and so forth. So I get exposed to a, a variety of sports and get to support them in those. Are you dancing with Sophia? You got some moves? I do have some moves, yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, 
Yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> well, the golf thing seems to be working out for you, and we can't be more excited for your year. Um, as my wife says, you know, Phil has maintained really good shape for the last four or five years, and you guys are around the same age, so what's, what's happening there? <laughs> so we know that you're into this year, and um, I don't see, how about a couple more majors? We can do that. Do it for all of us. You don't, don't do it yeah. for yourself. Do it for us. I'm in. I'm down with that. Yeah. I, I have a great feeling about this year. I have a great feeling because I've seen the difference, not only in the, the time and the, the work that I put in the offseason, but I'm seeing it. Uh, in my in my divot pattern, in my uh, shot dispersion, in in the 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 solidity of uh, impact, or how how solid uh, impact is starting to feel. So I'm very confident that the things I've been doing are the right things, and if I'm patient, I believe I'll get back to the level of play that uh, that I've been able to achieve in the past. There's no reason. There's nothing I, I could do 10 years ago that I can't do now with a golf ball. In fact, there's a lot more history, a lot more shots that I've hit that I don't have to f hit for the first time. I've already hit them. I know how to hit them. They're much easier the second, third, fourth time, and I feel like at this age, it, it, that should be an advantage. It should make the game easier, and that's why I'm so excited about this year. All right, well, we appreciate you being here. Thanks, Aaron. everybody. That's Phil Mickelson. We will see you next Thank week you. on Callaway Live. Jimmy Dunn will be on the show next week. We'll see you next week on Callaway Live. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.